begin this morning with the renewed efforts to rally support from voters ahead of the midterm elections. Yeah, Democrats are planning some big moves this weekend, hoping to gain momentum in several key battleground states. Many of those states, including Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Colorado, voted blue in the 2020 presidential election. But just two years later, support for Democrats has waned. Now, party leaders are going all out to keep control of both the House and the Senate. NBC News senior political editor Mark Murray joins us now for more on this election preview. Mark, good morning to you. And let's start in Georgia. Former President Barack Obama will hold a rally there later today. Then he'll head to Wisconsin and Michigan on Saturday. Our very own Shag Brewster spoke with incumbent Wisconsin Governor Evers about Obama's visit. Let's take a listen. What do you hope to get from the former President Obama's visit? Well, he's he, he's always right on. I mean, we, we had him four years ago and he was outstanding and people will be energized and they understand what a great world leader he is. And uh, I, I expect that uh, we're going to get uh, more people out to vote. That's the bottom line. This this race is close and the more people that we get out to vote, the best best chances we have to win. All right, so Mark, what do you think the Democrat strategy is here in turning to Obama in this final push before the election? Yeah, Steve, this is all about getting out the vote, and we are definitely in rally season. And Barack Obama, the Democrat, the former president, remains the Democrats' top surrogate uh, uh, to be able to do these types of events, even six years after leaving office, 14 years after first winning the presidency back in 2008. And uh, a lot of this is just to galvanize rank-and-file Democratic voters, and particularly key African-American voters. That's why we're going to see the former president in Atlanta rallying for Raphael Warnock, as well as Stacey Abrams, and then, as you mentioned, off to Wisconsin and also in Michigan tomorrow. And uh, it, it uh, the, one of the things that our NBC News poll ended up finding when it looked at overall enthusiasm was that some enthusiasm has been waning in urban America and including with uh, uh, crucial black voters. And uh, that's just one poll, but it shows a reason why you're seeing the former president really trying to get the vote out, because in these battlegrounds, in these close races, every single vote matters. Mark, let's talk about the current president now. President Biden and Vice President Harris are also making appearances for a really key race. We've been talking a lot about this week after a debate. They're fundraising with Democratic Senate candidate John Fetterman at a Pennsylvania Democratic part dinner party later tonight. Does President Biden have an advantage in Pennsylvania and what can the vice president do to boost support here? I mean, especially, like I said, after performance in the debate this week earlier was less than stellar, according to many people. What do you think can happen here? Well, this is uh, Scranton Joe Biden, uh, and so he does definitely have Pennsylvania roots. Pennsylvania is a state that he has visited uh, uh, as much as almost any other state um, as president. And what is going to be interesting is that we are seeing both President Biden and Vice President Kamala mm -hmm. Harris share the, the stage, something they often don't do uh, for this fundraising event we're going to see in Philadelphia later tonight. It is notable, however, though, this isn't the kind of same rally that we're going to see Barack Obama do for Raphael Warnock and for Stacey Abrams. This is going to be more of a fundraising event. And Joe Biden uh, has had a kind of a different role for Democrats hitting the fundraising circuit, doing virtual fundraising events, uh, doing actual uh, official White House event in some of these battleground states and districts. So not your traditional rally. Definitely want to watch, though, Mark. And if we're talking a big picture here, if you can, give us a larger view of this. Many of these races are neck and neck, and Democrats on the defensive here. What do they need to do to get voters out this final week before the midterms? Yeah, it's just kind of events all like these, what you're seeing, you're raising money, having rallies to galvanize rank and file Democrats, winning over persuadable voters. Stephen, as you ended up mentioning, uh, you know, the last couple of weeks or so, polls show that the political winds are blowing at the Republicans' backs. And uh, a lot of key races have kind of moved from lean Democrat to toss up. Uh, other, uh, uh, you know, Republicans seem to have, quote unquote, the momentum and the advantage. But I do remember just two years ago when all the polls were blowing in the Democrats' directions. And while Joe Biden ended up winning the presidency, Democrats didn't do as well as they thought they would do. And so sometimes these kind of like looking how the political winds are blowing, the ways that the polls are all moving, could sometimes provide some uh, false positives or false negatives on what the real situation is. And we're not really going to know what the true environment is until we end up uh, start counting those votes on November 8th.
Hmm. The suspense is building, getting down to the wire there. All right, Mark Murray, thank you. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.